tell people about the beginning of care and because I think that's a beautiful thing. I remember thinking of hearing of care packages. Oh, they had a care package, care package. I know I'm semi-encyclopedic on World War II. And that, at the end of that war, that's when it all started, didn't it? Exactly, and it's interesting because you were just talking to Lindsay, weren't you, at Fair yeah. Share about food parcels in the UK. And CARE started by sending food parcels from America to the UK um, when loads and loads of people in this country needed them, when we were still having rationing after the Second World War. And we did that for many years, helping send food parcels all over Europe after the Second World War. And then Europe started to get back onto its feet and CARE said to itself, OK, well, is that job done? And we looked around the west, rest of the world and we said, no, job not done yet. Um, and we started working in all of these other countries where we do now. And I think one of the lovely things you were saying earlier to Lindsay uh, about the different charities that you're supporting is that, you know, people want to support um, people in the UK yeah. and around the rest of the world. This idea that you have to do one or the other, it's just not true. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fantastic that you're supporting and, and everyone who's donating are supporting charities working here and around the rest of the world. So we started by doing um, that. In fact, people started by sending food packages to help us here in the UK. Yeah. And now it's great that we're in a position to help people in other countries when they need it. And Yemen, in particular, really needs it at the moment. Yes, absolutely. So that's why the extra marathon today for in Aden is, uh, and Yemen is, is such, yeah, I feel good. I, I, I always feel I don't do enough for the city of my birth. I was born in Barika. That's where I was born, the shining place. I think Barika means the shining place. And, uh, it's very, I think the sand there was very, there was a wide expanse of sand and it was very shiny, uh, you know, because it was all sand. But then uh, a refinery was built on top of it, so that, right. that changed. But yes, that's, I was born in Barika. Um, and the money that comes in, how will that be spent? Can you equate it? We're talking about, um, Lindsay was talking about uh, one pound gets four meals. Uh, can you give any figures that help people grab hold of how their money is helping? Well, we're going to use some of the money, absolutely, to, to help our work in Yemen. And uh, you spoke to uh, Suha, one of our colleagues in Yemen earlier in the month. Yes, indeed. Um, who told you a little bit about that. And I thought that one of the ways of, of demonstrating uh, where the money will go will be to tell you a bit about um, uh, someone I met when I was there two years ago, actually in Arden. Yep. Um, she was called Iman, um, but she, she, did, she wasn't originally from Arden. She was from Hodeida, which is this city, uh, a port city um, on, the, uh, on the Gulf uh, coast, so on the west coast of, uh, of Yemen, um, which you might remember, but two Christmases ago, there was a lot of fighting, a lot of bombing, and Hodeida was really under pressure. Yes, I do. Um, and, and lots of people fled the city, and, and her house was destroyed, um, and they fled 300 miles south uh, to Arden, um, and... Uh, she, so she had to leave behind all of her, all her belongings, her children's schools, her children's toys, her income. And she was just living in temporary accommodation, like lots of other people in Arden um, who had fled from Hodeida. And she was able to be part of a care project, which was a fantastic kind of win-win project. So one of the things is suddenly we had all these extra children in Arden who'd moved from Hodeida. And we needed to make sure they could still go to school. So part of the project was to rehabilitate a school, um, which you know wasn't in a fit state for children, to make it in a fit state for children and get all of these extra children not missing out on their education. But we were able to employ um, people like Iman um, to do that work, women and men, um, uh, to rehabilitate this school. So as well as giving her an income which she needed to feed her children and, and and have a place to live we were also repairing the school where most of her younger children were then able to get educated her 16 year old boy was already like her working to support the rest of the family um and uh, she was very very grateful for that support and you know it's those kinds of very clever win-win projects that we can do in in yemen and and people support will help us do more of things like that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's, uh, 
Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm doing a little bit of help. You guys are doing a lot of help. I'm just doing a, a little bit to help it go. So, so thank you for that. Um, well, and, and every every uh, every little bit does help. And um, and the the kind of support that people give, you know, really help us to uh, to do this uh, to do this work really really well. So we do help a lot of people in Yemen. Um, over two million people last year, so that's about one in ten of the people who really need help in Yemen, um, just through care. And obviously, there's there's a lot of different kind of funding that goes into that. But this kind of um, extra, very special uh, funding that we can use, we can be really flexible with it, and we can kind of spot where uh, maybe the funding from someone else isn't um, uh, isn't quite helping us do it the way we want them to do it. And we can use this extra funding to, to, to really make the, the programs even better. So it'll make a big difference. Thank you. That is, that is quite right. Just got to finish the bloody thing now. That's a, which... Yeah, well, you've just passed the 30 mark. That's a good uh, milestone for you today. Yes, yeah, so the total I'm doing is 84K, 84.4K today. So only 50K to go. Only 50K. No big, well, 54K. This is how I'm going to have to look at it, but yeah, I'm just going to count down the first marathon and then I'm going to press the reset button and count down the second one, so uh, I've got to kind of ignore this marathon, that's what, that's kind of what I'm trying to do, like this is just chat, I'm just chatting with you and I'm going for a walk and then when I start the second one, that will be the marathon for the day, this, that's, that's the only way I can sort of compartmentalise it in my brain. Okay, so we're warming up. Yeah, just, yeah, it's just a warm up. Gotcha. Right. <clears throat> now, so it's great to talk to you. I'm going to be talking, I'm February talking to you a short time before, but we did talk to you at the beginning. Thanks for coming along uh, on my last day. And uh, it's brilliant that we can help you. And uh, I'm great that CARE not only did what they did back in the early days, because I do appreciate America helping out when the rest of us in Europe were having a tough time. And now we're helping out around the world. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Well, you certainly are helping her out, out, out around the world, and a huge, huge thank you to you. It's incredible what you've done, so thank you so much. No problem. Take care and stay safe. Will do. See you soon. See you soon. Thanks, Ari.